Humans stand apart from other primates because of their mostly naked skin, a stark contrast from the dense fur of their relatives. Fur, a dense coat of hair found in many mammals, serves primarily as insulation, helping animals maintain their body temperature in various climates. It also serves as a means of communication among animals and camouflage. For example, many species use the color and patterns of their fur to blend into their environment, evading predators or as beautiful mating displays. It is evident that for our primate relatives, fur is a crucial element for survival, but humans took a different evolutionary path. Given these essential functions, the question of why and when humans lost their fur becomes even more intriguing. Could it have been for survival, for adaption, or something more curious? Stay tuned to find out. Interestingly, humans have roughly the same number of hair follicles as chimpanzees, but our body hair differs significantly from the fur of other primates. While primates like chimpanzees have thick, coarse hair covering their bodies, humans have a mix of vellus and terminal hairs. Vellus hairs are fine and almost invisible, covering most of our body. Terminal hairs, which are thicker and more pigmented, appear in specific areas such as the scalp, underarms, and pubic parts. This distribution and type of hair actually provide clues about our evolutionary past and the functions our remaining hair serves. There are many evolutionary theories to why we lost our hair, but can all of them be correct? Let's find out. As our ancestors moved from dense forests to open savannas, they needed efficient ways to cool down. Sweating, particularly through eccrine sweat glands, became a crucial adaption. Unlike apocrine glands, which are linked to body odor, Eccrine glands produce a watery sweat that evaporates quickly, cooling the body. This evolutionary theory, called the thermoregulation theory, enabled early humans to engage in persistent hunting, outlasting prey through sheer endurance and aided by our hairless, sweat-efficient skin. Persistent hunting is a practice where hunters rely on stamina and tracking skills rather than speed to exhaust their prey. This method would have been significantly hampered by a thick fur coat which retains heat. This ability gave early humans a competitive edge, allowing them to hunt during the heat of the day while many predators were inactive. This adaption highlights the intricate link between our physiological changes and survival strategies. Now in 2003, Hegel and his colleague, Walter Bodmer from the University of Oxford, put forward another explanation for early human fur loss, which they called the ectoparasite hypothesis. This theory highlights the evolutionary benefits of a hairless body in maintaining health and hygiene. They argued that a hairless ape would have suffered from fewer parasites, a major advantage. If you look around the world, ectoparasites are still an enormous problem in the form of biting flies that carry disease, says Pagel. And those flies are all specialized to land on and live in fur and deposit their eggs in fur. Parasites are probably one of the strongest selective forces in our evolutionary history, and still are he added. And nothing's come along to make us question this hypothesis since he and Bodmer first came up with it. Ticks, lice, and other pests thrive in dense fur, spreading diseases and causing discomfort. By losing fur, early humans minimized these risks and gained an evolutionary advantage. But there are also cultural variables that highlight the connection between biology and technology in human evolution. Mastery of fire, for example, and the development of clothing played significant roles in our hair loss. Fire provided warmth, reducing the need for insulating fur, and the invention of clothing offered protection from the elements, allowing for further reduction of body hair. The ability to control fire, which began around two million years ago, provided a reliable source of warmth and protection. With the ability to create and sustain fire, early humans could survive in colder climates without relying on a thick fur coat. The regular use of clothing, which emerged around 170,000 years ago, according to scientific estimations, further insulated our ancestors from the elements. These innovations illustrate how cultural practices influenced our biological evolution, leading to a gradual loss of fur. But there is one more important reason that adds on to why we could have lost fur along the way. Genetic studies reveal the HR hairless gene, which influences hair growth patterns, along with other genes involved in hair growth and maintenance, underwent significant mutations in our evolutionary past. 
The mutations in these genes likely contributed to the gradual reduction of body hair and led to changes in the density and distribution of hair in our bodies. By studying these genetic variations, researchers can estimate when changes in our hair growth occurred and trace the timeline to our transformation. This genetic perspective provides a deeper understanding of the biological mechanisms behind our unique appearance. Before we debate the time frame of our loss of fur, let's talk about why some areas have remained hairless. And subscribe to take a leap into our weekly videos that bring back the amazing errors of our primitive past. Specific evolutionary pressures have shaped the distribution of our hair on our bodies, optimizing our ability to interact with our environment. Certain body parts like palms, feet and wrists are hairless due to evolutionary adaptions from function and sensitivity. Hairless palms and soles enhance grip and allow for more precise tactile feedback and sensitivity, which is beneficial for tool use, climbing, handling food and manipulating objects. These adaptions reflect the intricate balance between functionality and evolution. Yet why do we have so much hair on our heads? What function does this serve? Well, despite our general hairlessness, the phenomenon of retaining thick hair on our heads serves multiple purposes. The importance of head hair can be seen in both survival and social dynamics. Head hair may play a role in social signaling and mate attraction, with varying styles and lengths offering different social and cultural messages and visual cues about individuals' age, health and identity. The hair on our head plays an important role in social and sexual selection, strongly influencing mate selection and social interactions. But scalp hair is especially vital for infants and young children whose brains need shielding from temperature extremes and fluctuations. Scalp hair offers essential protection against ultraviolet, UV, radiation, preventing sunburn and reducing the risk of heat stroke, but it also helps maintain heat in colder climates. Still, the most pressing question remains, when did we go furless? Charles Darwin, the father of evolution, thought our fur loss was due to sexual selection. Our ancestors simply preferred less hairy mates. But surprisingly, most researchers today dismiss this as a primary cause of fur loss. The transition from dense forests to open savannas marked a significant shift in our evolutionary trajectory. As early humans adapted to new environments, the need for efficient cooling mechanisms and protection from parasites became paramount. So around 1.2 million years ago, as Homo erectus ventured into open landscapes, they faced a new environment with challenges that required adapting to survive. While pinpointing the exact time frame of our hair loss is challenging, fossil records and genetic studies of this time indicate that our ancestors began to adapt to these changes by shedding fur and mutations associated with hair loss occurred gradually over hundreds of thousands of years after this. If we take a look back at the many theories, it is plausible to think that scientists are able to reconstruct the timeline of our hair loss through fossil evidence that highlights social and cultural factors and changes in our genetic markers that offer insights into the environmental conditions of the time. The journey from fur-covered ancestors to mostly hairless humans reflects a complex interplay of biological and cultural evolution, emphasizing the adaptive strategies that have enabled our survival. As you continue to explore our evolutionary history, check out our videos where we uncover more intriguing details of our evolution and the remarkable story of how we became who we are today. By looking into the amazing physical changes in our lineage, we enrich our understanding of the mysteries of our past.